you are welcome to today's video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's video lesson, I'll be discussing about a very important aspect in chemistry and it is simply called quantum numbers and calculations involved in quantum numbers. Now, this must be noted. It must be noted that in chemistry, we have four basic quantum numbers. And what are these quantum numbers? The first quantum number we must take note of is simply called the principal quantum number. So in the course of this class, I'm going to short the word quantum number to be QN. Okay, so that we can basically go through all the quantum numbers so easily. So the first quantum number we are to discuss about is called the principal quantum number. And the principal quantum number is denoted with a symbol. And the symbol to which is denoted is N. This must be noted. It is not capital letter N. Capital letter N is nitrogen as an element. Okay, so the symbol to which the principal quantum number is denoted is what? N. Now, moving further to the next quantum number, it has a name and it is simply called the azimuthal quantum number. I believe you are getting through this. Quantum number. And it must be noted that the azimuthal quantum number can also be called the subsidiary quantum number. The azimuthal quantum number can also be called the subsidiary quantum number. And if we don't call the azimuthal quantum number the subsidiary quantum number, we can give it another name and it can also be called the secondary quantum number. The secondary quantum number. And if we don't call it the secondary quantum number, we can give it the last name, which is called the angular momentum quantum quantum number so all these are the possible names for the first quantum number here called the azimuthal quantum number okay these are the other names the subsidiary quantum number the secondary quantum number and the angular momentum quantum number whereby all these quantum number which is one quantum number has a symbol to which it is denoted and it is denoted with the symbol and it is Oh, uh, L. Okay, small letter L, not capital letter L. Capital letter L can mean liters. Okay, it is basically small letter L. That's the symbol to which we denote the azimuthal quantum number. Well, the next quantum number we must take note of has a name and it is simply called the magnetic quantum number. The magnetic quantum number, whereby the last quantum number we'll be discussing in the course of this class is called the spin quantum number the spin quantum number so all these are the quantum numbers we'll be discussing in the course of this video class whereby we have to start with the first quantum number here called the principal quantum number so if you've not yet subscribed to this channel do well to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out the next video lesson to be posted and also share these videos with your friends to help one another. So with all this said, let's quickly move over to the next quantum number, the first quantum number called the principal quantum number. So guys, let's quickly start with the first quantum number called the principal quantum number. Understanding the concept of the principal quantum number is very, very important. So let's see how it goes. Now, first thing first, we already said that the principal quantum number is denoted with a symbol and that symbol is A, okay? Whereby it must be noted that the principal quantum number describes various concepts. So what does the principal quantum number describe? That, well, that's what we're discussing right now. So first thing first, it describes the, it describes the main energy level, the main energy level of an atom. So this must be noted. First thing first, the uh, principal quantum number denotes, the, or describes rather, 
the main energy level of an atom. Now, moving further, this same quantum number called the principal quantum number, okay, first I said it describes the main energy level of an atom, also, it describes the size of an orbital. This must be noted. It describes the size of an orbital. I did not say it describes the shape of an orbital. I said it describes the size of an orbital. Whereby for this orbital, it is a region in space where there is a high possibility of finding an electron. And you already know that electron is one of the subatomic particles that are found in an atom. You know, we have three subatomic particles that are found in an atom, which I call pain, and they are protons, electrons, and neutrons. So, a region in space where there's a high possibility of finding this subatomic particle called electron is basically called the orbital. And all these subatomic particles, they have their respective charges whereby the charge for the proton is positive, electron is negative, and for neutron, it is neutral, okay? Whereby for protons and neutrons, basically, both of them are found in the nucleus of an atom, whereby electron specifically is found in orbital. That's why it is a region in space where there is an high possibility of finding electron, and it is called orbital. Now, moving further to what next the principal quantum number describes, we've said already that it describes the main energy level of an atom, the size of an orbital, and lastly now, which is very important, it describes shells. This is very important. It describes shells. So the question we ask ourselves, what are these shells? Because these shells, they have symbols. That is what we'll be talking about. So it describes what? Shells. What are these shells? They include the K shell, okay, K shell, the L shell, the N shell, the N shell, and let's just say the O shell. So you can see all of these are the shells that the principal quantum number describes. And all these shells have their specific number that is allocated to them based on the n value for the principal quantum number. Now, this is what I mean. Because for the k shell, its number based on, on the n value is 1. Okay, and it's a very serial where like for k shell, the n value is 1. For l shell, it becomes the n, uh, n value 2 and 3 four and five so all these are the numbers that are allocated to these shells based on the n value because all these i'm saying is going to be very helpful in the course of this class so you have to take note of all these concepts now if you ask this question what is the value for n for the q share what will you say it is one because you can see that n is what n is the number that is giving us the values for this uh, shells written here. So it must be noted that if they ask you what's the value for the for the what's the value for n for the L share, you simply say two. What's the value for n for the M shell? You simply say three. What's the value for n for the N shell? You simply say four. What's the value for n for the O shell? You simply say five. So you can see that all these shells have their respective numbers that are allocated to them. Because all of these I'm saying now is going to help us as we progress in the course of this class going over to the next quantum number, which is called the azimuthal quantum number. So with all this said, let's quickly go over to the next quantum number, which is called the azimuthal quantum number, whereby this representation written here, I'm going to write it up here because I, I want this particular representation to be written here so that we can be able to see them always. And as we progress into this class, you see how to solve practice questions under this aspect. Okay, so let's go over to the next quantum number called the azimuthal quantum number. Now, let us go over to the next quantum number and it is simply called the azimuthal quantum number. Now, this must be noted. Remember I said that the azimuthal quantum number has a symbol to which it is denoted. And what's that symbol? It is L, small letter L. Now, moving further, this must be noted. What does the azimuthal quantum number describe? 
Because you know we talked about what the principal quantum number described. So let's talk about what the azimuthal quantum number described first. It describes the number of sub energy level. It describes the number of sub energy level. Remember what we discussed about the principal quantum number. We said main energy level go here. It is what it describes the number of sub energy level of an atom. And also, this must be noted, it describes the shape of an orbital. This is where it's very important. We have to take note on, on the azimuthal quantum number. You can see here, I said the azimuthal quantum number describes what? The shape of an orbital. Remember, for the principal quantum number, I said the principal quantum number describes what? The size of an orbital. But here, the azimuthal quantum number is describing what? The shape of an orbital. So the question now be, what are these orbitals? Okay, we already said that orbitals is the region in space where, where there is a high possibility of finding an electron, but these orbitals have their respective representation. Okay, and the orbitals include the s orbital the p orbital the d orbital the f orbital the g orbital and the h orbital all these are the orbitals but in the course of o level and also the andre level examination because this topic is very important for those students writing the jam exam and also for those uh, in their first year in any university here in Nigeria, also outside the country Nigeria. Now, uh, basically, we need to just take note of the quantum number. Uh, we need to just take note of the uh, orbitals from the s orbital to the f orbital. That's what is mostly impo important. But basically, since I'm explaining, I have to just write this order, guys. The g orbital and the h orbital. I'm going to tell us. The, uh, the name of the orbitals and also their shapes is very important, okay? But when we start solving practice questions, we're going to like stop here or, you know, talk about more. Let's see how it goes in the course of the class. So, all these orbitals written here, you can see them there and they have their respective numbers that are allocated to them. You can see that for the principal quantum number, it has uh, some numbers that, that is allocated to them, and the number for the uh, orbitals written here starts from zero, and it is counted serially. So the S orbital here should be zero. You are counting serially. So after zero is the next number, one. After one was the next number, two, three, four, and five. So the point here is this, you can see that all these are the uh, orbitals, okay, and there are numbers allocated to them. And the quantum number that gave us this is called the azimuthal quantum number. So L is the one that is giving us these values for the orbital. So if you ask, what's the value for, for the S orbital, what will you say? Zero. But if you ask, what's the value for L? For the P orbital, what will you say? One. What is the value for L for the D orbital? What will you say? Two, so, like that, like that. You can see how it works. As we progress into this class, you'll get to understand properly how this concept works and you'll be able to solve practice questions when you see them. So, with all this said, let's quickly talk about the, uh, uh, the names of these orbitals and their respective shapes. Because all these orbitals have their respective names and shapes. So, with all this said, let's talk about the orbitals. Okay, here will bear the orbital, here will bear the name, and here will bear the shape. Okay, I'm going to manage both so that it can contain everything here. So what are the orbitals again? We basically highlighted them, the S orbital, the P orbital, the D orbital, or what's the next? The F orbital, D orbital, and H orbital, whereby uh, these orbitals have their respective names, and the name of the S orbital basically is called a spin okay that's the name of the s orbital is called spin well for the p orbital is called principle it is not called principa it is called the principle well for the d orbital is called diffuse okay well for the f orbital it has a name and it is called fundamental okay well for the g orbital has a name it is called gravi Station, where for the H orbital has a name and it is called height. So all these are the names of these orbitals whereby this place will entail their shapes. 
Okay, so what is the shape of the S orbital? It is spherical. The S orbital has what? A spherical shape. What is the shape of the P orbital? It is dumbbell in shape. Okay, what is the shape of the D orbital? It is double dumbbell in shape. Okay, and also what's the name of the, the shape of the F orbital? It is complex in shape like that like that was the shape of the g orbital complex also and lastly was the shape of the h orbital it is complex so you can see that from the f orbital to the h orbital they are all complex they have a complex shape okay okay so all these must be noted but most importantly in this class we'll be able to solve practice questions that cut that cut across this topic okay so you can see how the concept works remember we said that for the azimuthal quantum number it describes the sub energy level of an atom and also describes the shape of an orbital and you can see all the orbitals here their shapes and also the names of these orbitals and you can see the orbitals written here and the values and the numbers that are allocated to them so with all this said let's quickly progress to other aspects under this topic okay guys with all this said let us quickly move over to a new subheading which is the relationship between n and l remember i said n is called the principal quantum number whereby l is called the azimuthal quantum number also called the subsidiary quantum number also called the secondary quantum number or we simply say the angular momentum quantum number and remember we have to discuss about four quantum numbers but right now we want to relate the first two quantum number that is being discussed which is the principal quantum number and the azimuthal quantum number and to do this it is done by a formula remember how we got all this representation that n which is called the principal quantum number gives us shell and l which is called the azimuthal quantum number also gives us what orbitals precisely the shape of orbitals so with all this said let us progress because to relate the principal quantum number and the azimuthal quantum number it is done by a formula which is simply this the formula to relate it is l which is the azimuthal quantum number is equal to n minus one okay we have to work with this formula it's very important when we start solving practice question okay where l is called the what azimuthal quantum number and n is called the principal quantum number so you can see the formula that is used to solve practice questions relating to both of the quantum number the principal quantum number and the azimuthal quantum number so with all this said let us quickly tackle some practice questions whereby after solving i'll give you yours to solve and you do well to put the answer in the comment section below so here is the question let's take first example example number one which is this determine the let's say determine the azimuthal determine the azimuthal quantum number for the k shell that's the question determine the azimuthal quantum number for which of the shell the k shell very easy first of all remember that azimuthal quantum number has a symbol to which is noted and it is l and that is what the question is asking us to determine for which of the shell the k shell we have to be careful here remember which of the quantum number describes shells the principal quantum number and i said that was the value for n for the k shell now one yes now the quantum number I talked about shell is the principal quantum number which is n so what's the value for n for the k shell what's the number on top of k it is one so how do we now get our l value remember we have to use our formula which is l is equal to what n minus one so l now because what's our n value the n value given the question is one minus one so what become l zero so you can see how it works because we can use this same diagram this representation to solve this practice question without even using the formula and how do we do that you can see that they said that determine the value for l which is our as a motor quantum number for which of the shape k shell all of them are going in the vertical order you can see here that uh for the k shell the n value was one so what becomes the l value for this same k shell when you are coming down is 
um, zero. You can see it here. So you can also be asked, can I ask you what orbital does this particular azimuthal quantum number value belongs to? What orbital specifically when it is zero? It is the S orbital. You can see it here now because basically zero was a value that was on top of what? The S orbital. So with all this said, I'm going to give you your own practice question to solve under this aspect. And it's, going, it's still going to be similar to this. And the question is, what is the value for the azimuthal quantum number for the, uh, let's say, for the M shell? So you should solve this and provide the answer in the comment section below. So with all this said, let us progress to other aspect of the quantum number. And the quantum number we have to discuss next is the magnetic quantum number okay guys with all this said let us quickly move over to the next quantum number called the magnetic quantum number how do we solve questions on that is aspect very easy but first we have to understand what this quantum number describes and first of all it is this dotted with a symbol and that symbol is ML. This is very important. That's the symbol to which the magnetic quantum number is denoted. Okay, it is denoted as what ML. And now it must be noted that this quantum number describes various concepts. First of all, it describes the number okay of orbital in a given sub shell this is very important okay it describes the number of orbital in a given sub shell and this has a name it is called degree of degeneracy degeneracy the number of orbital in a given sub shell is called degree of what degeneracy and this degree of degeneracy is given with the symbol d and it has the formula to which it is solved which will solve practice question as we progress and it is 2l plus 1 Okay, the formula that's used to solve questions on degree of degeneracy is what? 2L plus 1, where, where we already know that D is called degree of degeneracy. And I believe L, we already know also that L is which of the quantum number, the azimuthal quantum number as discussed. So as we progress, we have to solve various pr practice questions under this aspect, whereby this same quantum number basically describes the orientation of orbital in space. Okay, it describes the orientation of orbital in space. Now, this must be noted. The next point must be noted, which I have to write now. This is very important. You have to take note of the orbit. And it must be noted that this magnetic quantum number that is denoted as ML ranges, magnetic quantum number ranges from minus L to plus L. This is very important. What did I say? The magnetic quantum number ranges from what? Minus L to plus L. What does it mean? It means that this magnetic quantum number we are seeing is related to L and L, which is minus L to plus L. And remember, what, what does this L signify? Azimuthal quantum number. That means the magnetic quantum number is basically relating to what now? The azimuthal quantum number. Now, with all this said, let us solve practice question on this aspect. Now, let us take an example, okay? Let's just take an example, and the question says, determine, okay, determine the ML values for the L when L is equal to 2. So the question is saying, determine the ML value when L is equal to 2. And now what does ML signify? It's magnetic quantum number. And what does L signify? It's azimuthal quantum number. So the question is not saying, we should get the value for ML when L is equal to 2. Very easy. So let's walk through this question. Now, remember I said that ML ranges from what? Minus L to plus L. So with all this said, let's solve. What was the L value given in the question 2? So how do we get our ML value? We will now say ML, which we already know to range from minus L to plus L, will not be equal to ML, will not be equal to what I mean, uh, L value 2. So we are saying minus 2, 2, plus 2. And we already know that we have numbers from minus 2 to plus 2. And what are the numbers? Okay, let's walk through them now. Minus 2. 
Okay, we are trying to aim to zero and will not go over to plus two. Now watch, minus two to plus two will not be minus two, comma, minus one, comma, zero. What's the next number? Plus one and plus two. So you can see that the values that is between minus two to plus two are all these. It is very easy. You basically count, you know, you are counting towards zero after zero. You now progress to the number you're having to the positive direction. Okay, it is minus two to plus two. So it's going to be from minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, and plus two. So all these are the values for the magnetic quantum number when L is equal to two. So you should solve this for me and put the answer in the comment section. What is the value for ML when L is equal to three? Okay, you do that in the practice, in the comment, you solve it and provide the answer in the comment section below. It's very easy. You can see how it works. I've already given us a, an example to walk through the question. Okay, it is so much very easy. So your own is from three, so you know what to do like that, like that, and get your answer without stress. So with all this said, let us quickly move over to the last quantum number called the spin quantum number. Okay, guys, now let us quickly move over to the last quantum number called the spin quantum number. So after discussing about the, the last quantum number, we simply go ahead to solve various practice questions under this topic so that we can master it very well. Meanwhile, the spin quantum number basically is denoted with the symbol S and it basically describes the direction of electron. It describes the direction of electrons, okay, the direction of electrons, either clockwise or anticlockwise, okay, let's say this is an orbital, okay, a box notation, and this orbital is the, is the S orbital, as we progress, you get to understand better what we mean by all this, okay, but just take note that in a particular box, it, the total number of electrons it can take is two electrons, okay, one electron is going up and the other coming down, Okay, so that's the rule. We have various rules that guides all this representation. But this is something you should know. Okay, okay, it's controlled by a rule called the, uh, the uh, Pauli's exclusion principle. But I'm not discussing about that right now. So we should just take note of the spin quantum number describes the direction of electron in an orbital, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. One end of the electron going up and is taking a positive sign and it is half positive one over two and the other coming down is also minus one over two so that's how it works actually of all the matters here is for we to be able to solve practice questions for we see them on this aspect and that is what i'll be focusing on after this concept okay it must be noted that the only quantum number out of the four quantum number that describe electron only is the spin quantum number you can see that on the spin quantum number i just talked about electron nothing else so this must be noted the only quantum number that describe electron only is called the spin quantum number so with all this said let's go over to practice questions under this topic now with all this said let us start with the first practice question but before we even do that let's remember those representations written up here before that the l basically describe all of the orbitals and the orbitals include the s orbital the p orbital the d orbital the f orbital because it's going to be helpful as we progress in the course of this study of the questions now here remember we said that the s orbital basically takes the value of zero and one two and three if so if g watch and it was here it's going to be like four and five but i'm just like you know removing those guys because questions we'll be solving is not going to like go through those particular or uh, uh, orbitals okay now let's just focus on this now first of all we have to basically look at the question and know how to solve it and what does question says the question says that write out the values for the four quantum numbers for the following how are we going to solve it remember you know that we have the four quantum numbers and their representation let's do that the quantum number includes the a principal quantum number l the azimuthal quantum number ml ml is basically the what now magnetic quantum number and s which is what the spin quantum number so how do we solve questions on this aspect so much very easy let's tackle the questions let's solve them one after the other and to tackle question number one that's a here and what does the question says write out the values for the four quantum number for the following and this a if a is what 3d what are we to do very easy for we to get our n 
value. Our n value is the number we are seeing at the front of the alphabets. Okay, you know, all these are the orbitals. This is the d orbital, the p orbital, the s orbital, the s orbital written there. So what did I say now? The n value is gotten from the number standing in front of the orbital, which is three. Are you getting me now? So the n value is what three. So moving further, how do we get our? Uh, you know, we are still on a. So what's the next l? Okay, remember that for we to get our L value, how do we get our L value? We have to look at the orbital that is standing with the number. It is the D orbital. So we have to come here to get our answer. You know, the D orbital, basically, what's the value for L for the D orbital? It is 2. So here becomes 2. Now, how do we get our ML value? Remember, to get our ML, we have to look at our L value given. And what, what was our ML value? Or what? how do we get our ML value? Remember, it ranges from minus L to plus L. So it's going to be ML will not be equal to, you know, our L value is 2. So minus 2 to plus 2, whereby we have numbers that ranges from minus 2 to plus 2, which is minus 2, minus 1, um, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. So all these are the numbers that basically gives, uh, uh, we have to get for our ML when L is equal to 2, it's very easy. So, and lastly, our S value is just plus 1 over 2 and minus 1 over 2, okay? This one just describes the direction of electro, either clockwise or anticlockwise, okay? For the S value, it's always same for all the questions, okay? It doesn't change. Meanwhile, let us basically move over to another practice question under this aspect. I'm, I'm going to give this, so you solve this, and provide the answer in the comment section where that I'll tackle this other part or let me leave this and go back to D okay for S okay so you do B and C for me and let me solve D and you see how it works so for the for S orbital uh, what is the N value what is the L value and what is the ML value and lastly what is the S value what's our N value remember I said the N value is got from the number standing with the orbital and what's the number four and now, what becomes our L value? Remember, our L value for S orbital was the number zero. Yes. And what becomes our ML value? It becomes zero also. Because since the number L value is zero, are we going to get a number for ML? No. Because you know already that ML ranges from minus L to plus L. So we cannot just write ML that becomes minus zero to plus zero okay it doesn't work this way minus zero to plus zero no we have numbers we have uh, we have no numbers here okay between minus zero to plus zero zero is simply zero so when we have l value to be zero our ml value is going to be zero also okay because we don't have numbers between zero okay we don't have number like now the l, the l value is zero so definitely the ml value is going to be zero also do you get now remember s a value doesn't change from plus one over two to uh Sorry, plus 1 over 2 and minus 1 over 2. These are our S value, that's the spin quantum number value. So you can see how questions like this work without stress. It's not difficult. So with all this said, you do well to tackle B and C and provide the answer in the comment section below. If you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button to this video and also share these video lessons with your friends. Thanks for watching.